Here we are on our fifth video on factoring polynomials. And, uh, you know, the first one is a very important step, uh, factoring out the greatest common factor. And then after that, you're basically counting terms to see what to do next. We've talked uh, the first part of dealing with a polynomial with four terms. We've talked about trinomials. And so now we're going to deal with binomials or polynomials with two terms. The uh, number one thing to look for is the difference of squares. Okay, And in math, difference means subtraction. And squares is going to refer to both terms being perfect squares, which essentially means you can take the square root of them. Once you've identified the problem as a difference of squares problem, it is extremely easy to uh, factor. Everybody likes doing difference of squares. It is a very, very simple step. Again, once you identify it, cake. I'm going to run through some examples so that you get the idea. But again, uh, you know, once you get the hang of this, this is the greatest factoring thing uh, that you'll ever do. Right? You always check to see if you can take out the greatest common factor. And we're looking at this. There is no greatest common factor. We have two terms. It is subtraction, and so now all you're checking to see is if you can take the square root of each of the terms. You ignore the negative sign here. So you look at the first one and say, yes, I can take the square root of x squared. Yes, I can take the square root of 9. Okay? x squared, the square root of x squared, if you're not sure, is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. So you're going to just set up two sets of parentheses, write the square root of the first term in both of them, which in this case is x, and write the square root of the second term in both of them, 3. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. It's factored. You can always check to see if you factored correctly by distributing and combining like terms, and you'll see that you can get x squared minus 9 out of this. Okay, so for the second Example here, we have two terms. Both of them can be taken, uh, you can take the square root of both of the terms. So it is a difference of squares problem. So we set up two blank parentheses. Take the square root of the first term. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 1 is 1. 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. Is this difference of squares? Well, can you take the square root of the first term? Can you take the square root of the second term? Is there a subtraction sign in between them? If the answer is to yes to all those questions, then it is difference of squares. So you're going to set up two sets of parentheses. Take the square root of the first term. Make sure you're taking the square root of everything. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of x squared is still x. So the square root of 4x squared is 2x. Write that information in both of the parentheses. Move on to the second term. Square root of 25 is 5. And 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. Move on to the next one here. Two terms, subtraction sign in between them. You can take the square root of both of those terms. So it is difference of squares. So we set up two sets of parentheses, take the square root of 36x squared, get 6x, write that in both of the parentheses, take the square root of 49, get 7, one gets a plus, one gets a minus. I mentioned earlier that the only challenging part of doing difference of squares is actually identifying whether or not it is difference of squares. And again, you do that by checking to see if there's a subtraction sign between the two terms and whether or not you can take the square root of both of those terms. Now, let's recall real quickly what a square root is. Okay, A square root means there is a number, or you're looking for the number, that when multiplied by itself gives you the number you're looking at originally. So, you know, the square root of 4 is 2 because 2 times 2 gives you 4. The square root of 36 is 
6 because 6 times 6 is 36. The square root of x squared is x because x times x is x squared. Now, this is the key to kind of what these examples have to do with. If you're really keen on what's going on, you realize that x is really x to the first. And so when we take the square root of a variable, all we're doing is dividing the exponent in half. So for a couple of examples of that idea, let's try the square root of x to the eighth, right? Eight divided by two is four. So x, the square root of x to the eighth would be x to the fourth because x to the fourth times itself would give us x to the eighth, okay? You can even go as far as saying, uh, what's the square root of x? Well, you should know that there's an x to the first in there. We divide that in half. The square root of x would just be x to the one half. And again, because x to the one half times itself, remember your exponent rules means when you're multiplying like bases, you're adding the exponents. One half times one or one half plus one half is x to the first. Now this idea here, we're going to come back to eventually. Right now, just understand, you know, the way, what you're looking to understand here is that to take the square root of something, you are dividing the, you know, to take the square root of a variable, you're dividing its exponent in half. So when you're asking yourself, is this a difference of squares? Again, you look and say, well, it's being subtracted. I can take the square root of this term, and then anytime there's a variable in there, you ask yourself, can I divide its exponent in half? Or really what you're asking is, is the exponent even? Okay. Now, of course, you can divide anything in half, but for factoring purposes, you know, you're usually going to leave it um, as a integer. So again, can we take the square root of this first term? Well, can we divide this in half? Is this exponent an even number? The answer in this case is yes. So we set up two parentheses. Take the square root of x to the fourth, which is x squared, because we divide four by two. Take the square root of 25, which gets five. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Let's move on to the next equation. Is this a difference of squares problem? Well, again, we have a subtraction sign. We have a number here, the coefficient. There is a square root of 49, and now we're just checking exponents. Are they even? The answer is yes. So this is a difference of squares problem. So the square root of x to the eighth, we divide eight by two and get x to the fourth. We take the square root of 49 and get seven. And we divide the two, uh, you know, the exponent of two and half, and get y. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. Now, one of the things to look out for when dealing with exponents that are bigger than two is whether or not you can continue on, because sometimes these will leave another difference of squares problem for us to look at. In this case, you can't take the square root of five, so we're done. In this case, we can't take the square root of 7y, so we're done. But let's look at a problem where there would be more than one step. So here we have a difference of squares. We have a subtraction sign, and we have two terms that we can take the square root of. So let's go ahead and do that. The square root of x to the fourth, you take the exponent, divide it in half, you have x squared. Take the second term, divide, um, square root it, get four. One gets a plus and one gets a minus. Okay, so now when we look at our answer, we have to determine whether or not we can continue going because when you're factoring, you are trying to go as far as possible. So we look at this first group. There's only two terms here. So we check, is this difference of squares? Well, right away we say no because we're adding. 
not difference. That's the sum. Okay, but in the second one, we are subtracting. So now we need to, to check to see if these two terms can be taken the square root of. Okay, and in fact, they can. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. So when we take the square, or when we do the difference of squares on that part, you get x minus 2, x plus 2. And then you cannot forget about the part that you did at the beginning. This whole thing is factored. This is your final answer. And again, remember, when you're factoring, your answer needs to be able to multiply together to give you the original. Now, it's always a good, uh, good idea to check to see whether or not there is another step in factoring. We haven't done that in any of the other um, uh, videos, but this, particular, this shows up often when you are dealing with a difference of squares. So anytime you're dealing with a difference of squares, just take a second to check whether or not you can continue going. I'm only going to do three more examples, and I think uh, you'll get the idea by that, that point. Um, make sure that you're going through your steps, okay? Make sure you don't forget the very first step every time when you're factoring, which is factor out a greatest common factor. You know, if we check this one, there is no greatest common factor. So we have two terms, and we have a subtraction sign in between them, so that means there is a chance that it is difference of squares. We can take the square root of the first term because we can take the square root of the coefficient, and the variable has an even exponent. And that's the same case in the second term. So we're going to head, go ahead and set up our blank parentheses. Take the square root of 25, which is 5. Take the square root of y to the 6, which means divide the exponent in half, so y cubed. Take the square root of 49, which is 7. Square root of x squared, which is x. One gets a plus and one gets a minus. And a real quick glance. Again, we don't need to worry about this one becoming difference of squares because of the positive sign. However, we want to check this. This being an odd tells us right away that we're not going to go any further. And you can't take the square root of 5 or 7 or x. So again, we're going to go through our steps. And we're going to see if there's any thing common, any common factor in our, in our terms that we can take out. And in fact, there is. There's a 5. Now, this is a perfect example of why it is very important to check to see if there is a greatest common factor. Because as is, this polynomial is not difference of squares. You cannot take the square root of 5. But when we take out that greatest common factor we're left with 1 minus x squared y to the 6th, which is the difference of squares. We have a subtraction sign, and both terms, uh, we we're able to take the square root of them. So make sure that you don't skip that first step. Don't forget about your 5 when you do this. Set up some blank parentheses. Take the square root of each term. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of x squared y to the 6 is xy cubed. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. This last example combines just about everything that we've done in this video so far. And if you can you know, factor this as difference of squares, there's no difference of squares that's going to throw you off at all. So we go through and ask ourselves, is there a common factor in, in all of this? Well, there is. There's a y. Nothing else can be taken out, though. So we're going to take that out front. y times 16x to the fourth minus 81. Now it is difference of squares because you can take the square root of both terms, and there's a subtraction sign in there. So we're going to have y and set up our blank parentheses. Square root of 16x to the fourth is 4x squared. Square root of 81 is 9. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. And now we're going to check to make sure we're done. 
you know, there's a positive sign in between here, so we know this cannot be factored any further, but there is a subtraction sign here. So then you have to ask yourself, can you take the square root of both of these terms? And the answer is yes. So we're going to write our final answer. Don't forget any of the other factors that you've found. Take the square root of 4x squared and get 2x. Square root of 9 is 3. One gets a plus, one gets a minus, and this whole group of factors is what you need as your answer.